Hello friends, I'm Dr. Rohit Shetty. I'm a refractive surgeon at Narayan Netralaya. I'm also a translation scientist at the Grow Lab. I'm going to talk to you about dry eye. Minute I say this word, the people who are listening to this will say, well, I, we know everything about it. Enough of materials. I've been personally involved in a dry eye work for the last 15 to 16 years both as a clinician and also as a scientist. So I'm not going into the reasons why you develop dry eye, what you already know or what it, or already you have been listening to from different lectures. Let me go into a little bit newer insight into this whole understanding about dry eye. The first myth is the dry eye should be dry. There should, no be, there should not be any water in it. That's the first myth. You can still be having a lot of watering with still dry eye because when you have dryness, there is some amount of irritation in the eyes. When you have irritation, your water comes. That means your eye is watery. People, the second myth is, if I have dry eye, when I cry, why should I have tears? The emotional tears is different from the eye, which is related to dryness. There are two different components. The crying has got an emotional component and the drying is a different component. The third myth is, I have symptoms which I cannot explain. I have symptoms of, it's just not about eye being dry. It's about sometimes I can't focus properly. My, when I drive in the night, I get glare. My street lights are filled with halos. I see ghosting, I see, I, my eyes feel tired and most important complaints is I'm not the same as I was many, many years back. I lose that positivity in me. So dryness today in definition is not just having a dry, dry, dry eye. I use the word dry. It's about a mix of symptoms which makes you feel completely not happy with your quality of life. So I'm looking at more at quality of life rather than just a mild irritation. When you have all this problem and imagine a lash gets into your eyes, for that moment your quality of life suffers because you're irritated. That's what happens. If your eye is always red, your quality of life suffers. People ask, do you drink all the time or do you party all the time? So that quality of life makes the dry eye of today completely different from what we have known in the past. Now, how do we approach this? We at Narayan Netralaya realize that there is a huge epidemic which is going to happen on the dry eye point of view way back in 2010. At that point of time, I use the word epidemic, even though it's scary today, because the amount of people who suddenly moved from, from a non-digital to the digital format, was a huge exponential increase. That huge exponential increase created huge stress on the eyes. As we look at evolution from the time, few billion years back, how the man was, and how the man is today. Eyes were meant for hunting, gathering food and everything else. Over time, we started using it for different, different, different reasons. And today, suddenly, we started using it for digital work, the pixel work. So how does it change? It's just not the eye becoming dry. There are eyes which has muzzles with it. So every time, you are focusing on something, the muscles have to move in, move out, move up, down. It's like a dancing there. Chronic looking at an object makes these muscles to go into a spasm. And spasm makes you go headache. People have migraines all the time. They keep popping up pills. People have uh, lethargy, uneasiness, everything. So, what I want to bring this here is a concept of not just 
having a tears or no tears, it's a, a triad of multiple things. A triad of having dryness, agreed. A lot of issues with your motility of your muscles and an emotional and psychological imbalance because of all this or emotional or psychological imbalance bringing in all this. It can be both ways. So how did we approach us, approach this in our clinic? One, we had a holistic approach of dryness and that's what we started in 2010. We brought in a new concept of evaluating everybody not for just dryness, but also looking at multiple other parameters, including your quality of vision, quality of life, your psychological well-being, and multiple other things. Once we started doing it, we started understanding this disease differently. Also in our clinic, in way back in 2011 or 12, we built our first research labs and a huge amount of resources manpower and brilliant minds, we built one of the best laboratories for dry eye research, which I'm proud to be part of. So every time anybody comes here with non-resolving dryness or somebody with vague complaints, which you cannot explain, we were able to take the tears, analyze it, do research and come out. A lot of things came out of this research. One of the major things is vitamin D, and dry eye, which was never really linked at that point of time. What we did was, if you have a low vitamin D, you have more chances of dryness. And the triad, low vitamin D also makes you feel uh, lethargic and less enthusiastic about everything. So we started bringing this nexus. We started bringing in new technologies. We were the first to introduce imaging technologies including the tear film and that tear film imaging helped us to treat we started with the first to introduce the real-time imaging of the nerves inside the eyes it's impossible to see it with the best of technology only one technology could do it the confocal microscopy and this technology helped us to understand what was happening it's a completely new world out there we, we evaluated that then we started looking at the muscles, how it impacts it. Then it started looking at the psychological well-being. And finally, we started customizing treatment. We always believe that the way to treat any disease in the future or present as far as possible is to customize it. That's the word. That's why the word personalized medicine is very important. And we applied this in our dry eye. And that's why we've been treating one of the most advanced dry eye labs and using this dry eye labs we've been treating a lot of people who have been not been very comfortable with many drugs and uh, drops they have been using so how does the workflow happen the person comes in you get a questionnaire we fill what you are facing evaluation done we put a, a paper called schema strip there that tells you how much of wetting is there. There are imaging tools which looks at glands, like meibomian glands, which secretes the tears. We look at all those aspects. And then we also look at your muscle motility. Sometimes we do the nerve analysis. It takes around two and a half, three hours because we have to look at every layer. I'm talking about layers here, which are a few microns. You know, imagine, imagine, imaging a micron, a few microns, and that is what takes it to the different level of understanding. After we do all that, we decide, we order some blood tests based on what we feel could be the culprit. And once we come back to the, us with the blood test, because a lot of things in the blood also can affect the eye. Like I told you, eye, dry eye is not just a system around the eye. As some issue in your toe can also have an impact on your dryness. There are different diseases which can have, uh, which can impact based on which part of your body is affected. So based on that, after the blood test has come, we decide whether to give you a medical line of treatment or there are other treatment options, which is we call it as uh, heat-based or uh, laser-based uh, approach. It's not actually a laser, it uses more of heat. There's something called as a lippy flow and a lippy view. Lippy view looks at the, the tear film 
lipid content, the lippy flow does a nice massage. It's more like a spa for the eyes and it, it opens up those glands. As it opens up the glands, whatever is clogged in comes out. So it's like a clogged water pipe. If you want to make the clogged water pipe to flow, well, you have to push it, you have to flush it so that it starts flowing. So after you do that, there are other options like eye light or EI where you start giving some light rays and that changes the, the heat level of the lids and that also can open up. These things are, can be done once a year. Sometimes you do just do once, that's enough. Or sometimes as it comes, you can use it. But even if you do after this treatment, you still would require use of drops. And for at least sometimes six months or eight months, along with other treating whatever you have in your blood like vitamin D, B12, a lot of this health systemic health changes. If still it doesn't work, we block those uh, small pipes which take the tears out because if you block those pipes, it's, you are able to retain the tears more. It's called punctal plugs. And sometimes nothing works. We have special lenses where we fit on the eyes which holds the eye from evaporating faster. So there are different levels of treatment we do. And finally, to sum up, what I feel is dry eye today is not just about looking at you and just prescribing some drops. Dry eye is a speciality. We are very proud to have a fantastic team with us and the fantastic modalities of uh, imaging, treating and also a biggest source of knowledge for us to treat, individualize or personalize the way is through our labs, the research labs. It helps us to give how do we treat a particular person and I am very proud to be associated with all of them. Thank you.